Hey guys, hope you're all doing good and welcome to our new session on casting processes. Do you guys know what composite materials are? Well, composite materials are those materials which are manufactured by mixing two or more materials with different properties. What makes them interesting is that these materials possess different properties than the individual materials that they were composed of. In our previous sessions on casting processes, we didn't talk about composite materials even once. Why are we talking about them now? Well, it's because in today's session, we'll be talking about a casting process which is used to manufacture composite materials. This process is called stir casting. In stir casting, mechanical stirring is used to mix a molten matrix metal with a dispersed face such as ceramic particles and short fibers. This forms a liquid ceramic material which is then cast by conventional casting methods. Stir casting is considered to be the simplest and most cost effective process for liquid state fabrication. Now let's talk about the stir casting setup. The stir casting setup consists of a furnace, reinforcements, feeder and a stirrer. The purpose of the stirrer is to form a vortex in which the reinforcing materials and molten metal are mixed. It consists of a stirring rod and an impeller blade. The rod is connected with a motor which is used to operate the mechanical stirrer. To supply the reinforcement material to the molten metal, the feeder is used. Apart from this, bottom pouring furnaces are usually employed. A bottom pouring furnace is one in which the molten metal is poured into the mold from its bottom with the help of a remote switch. These furnaces are more suitable for this process because the stirred mixture is fed into the mold quickly to avoid solid particles sticking onto the surface of the crucible. Now let's talk about the process. First, the matrix material is placed inside the furnace for melting. This matrix material consists of light metals such as aluminum, magnesium and titanium. During the same time, reinforcing materials like carbon fiber and silicon carbide are preheated in another furnace. This preheating is necessary in order to remove impurities, moisture, etc. After the matrix material is melted completely, the stirring process is commenced. The molten matrix is stirred for some time to create a vortex and then the reinforcing materials are poured into the matrix. This is done at a constant rate using the feeder. The stirring process continues for some time after the reinforcing materials are poured completely. This is done to ensure that the reinforcing material is completely and uniformly mixed with the molten matrix. Now, the molten matrix is poured into the mold. This mold can be a permanent mold, a sand mold or a lost wax mold. The molten matrix is allowed to cool down and solidify inside the mold. After the solidification process is over, the final casting is obtained. That's all for the stir casting process. Now let's talk about its advantages and disadvantages. The stir casting process is simple, flexible and cost effective. The only disadvantage of this process is the inability to obtain a homogeneous dispersion of the particulates. Owing to its advantages which outshine its disadvantages, stir casting is employed in a large part to today's industry. It is used to manufacture bicycle frames, wheel rims, missile fins, jet engine blades, disc brake rotors, propeller shafts and much more. Now it's time to bring this session to a halt. Today we talked about stir casting, its advantages, disadvantages and applications. We'll cover more topics on the casting process. This is Skill Link and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.